Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. This video will be the first video in a series of video lessons that will investigate circles. As we begin this discussion of circles, we're going to talk about lines and segments that intersect circles and also some properties of those lines and segments. To begin this discussion about lines and segments and circles, let's start by defining the different lines and segments that we are interested in. First, there are two lines that we want to talk about. The lines are on the diagram. Let's highlight them now. The first one, and probably the most important, where we'll spend most of our time, is called a tangent line. A tangent line will intersect the circle one time. Whereas our other line, the secant line, which you can see here, the secant line is going to intersect the circle twice. We will use tangent lines and secant lines, that vocabulary, uh, as we discuss other shapes, and not only geometry and also algebra, but, but for this chapter, it's just going to be related to the circle. Now, we also have some segments on the interior of this circle. Uh, I would imagine these segments are, are vocabulary terms that you are familiar with already. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about those. Uh, the first one I want to start with over here on the, the left side is a chord. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Okay, you can see both endpoints of the chord right there on the circle. The next one I want to talk about is the longest chord of a circle, and that is its diameter. The diameter, first off, it is a chord. Because it's a chord, that means it has the same definition up here. It's a, it's a diameter is going to have its endpoints on the circle. Um, but it is a chord that contains the center of the circle. So the diameter has to pass through the center of a circle. And finally, our last segment, we'll highlight it right now, it's called the radius. The radius has one endpoint at the center, other endpoint on the circle. So there you have it. Those are our, our lines and segments of a circle. Uh, next, we're going to do a little bit of practice identifying uh, these different lines and segments. First example problem is asking us to identify the different segments and lines in the diagram that we see. The first uh, problem wants us to name two radii. Uh, so radii is the, the plural form of radius, so I want two different radius segments. Um, the first one uh, maybe is the most obvious one. It's drawn as a radius. It is right here. So I'm going to say AB. Our proper notation on the notation of a segment is just the, the line or the bar above the two letters, the, the endpoints of the segment. Uh, the other radii we can name are going to be either uh, this side of this diameter or this side of the diameter. We can name either one. I'll go ahead and, and name A, D. Right there. Okay, next we want to name a chord. So any chord will do. Um, 
So core just has to be a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So right here, EC is a chord. Next, we want a diameter. So a diameter has to be a chord, but it goes through the center of the circle. Now, there's only one such uh, chord on the circle that does that. Starts at point D, goes through point A onto F. So we're going to name that D, F. All right, next thing to find is a secant line. So secants and tangents, remember those are lines. Lines have arrows on the ends of them, so that helps kind of narrow down where we're looking. Uh, the secant has to go through the circle twice. So we're looking for it to intersect the circle twice. And so my secant line is gonna be right over here. It's going to be line D, E. Now, notation-wise, make sure we are notating that this is a line. We've got arrows on the top of that name. Next, I want a tangent line. Tangent's going to intersect the circle once. So that is right here. Uh, and unfortunately, looking at this picture, uh, I've, I've discovered that uh, we don't really have a name, a way to name this line because I didn't give you two points on this line. There's this point B right here, but there's not a second point. So why don't we just make one up so we can answer this question? Let's say that, uh, let's just pretend maybe that right out here is point G. And if that's the case, we could name that tangent line BG. Okay. And finally, we are asked to identify a point of tangency. That is just simply the point where the tangent line intersects the circle. That's going to be right here, point B. All right, there we have it. We've identified the different segments and lines on this circle. Next up, we're going to go over a couple of different theorems that help us relate these different lines and segments of circles. And the first one is called tangent line to a circle theorem. And it's illustrated, illustrated here, stated here. Uh, let's read through this and pick out all the pieces in the diagram. Uh, it says, if we have a line that is tangent to the circle, so, so right here we have our tangent line, uh, then that line is perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So right here we have our radius. And where the radius and the tangent line meet right at that point of tangency, notice that we do have a right angle here. So it is perpendicular. Okay, so that's our tangent line to a circle theorem. I've got two example problems that will help us illustrate this particular theorem. All right, this first example problem is asking us to verify a tangent to a circle. So question here is, is ST, uh, so ST is, notice that this is not a tangent line, it's not continuing, uh, but it's just a tangent segment. It's intersected the circle once. So is this segment ST tangent to circle P? Well, according to our last theorem, the tangent line to a circle theorem, uh, the segment ST is only gonna be tangent if it is perpendicular to the radius. So what I wanna check right here, is this a right angle? Okay. Well, if that's a right angle formed between the, the tangent line and the radius, um, then that means the tangent is, is in fact a tangent. So, so what we're going to check is do we have a right angle here? Uh, notice we've got this extra segment connecting this point S to the center of the circle. That completes for us a right or maybe a right triangle. Uh, so that's what we're going to check is do we have a uh, a Pythagorean triple here. Do we have a set of numbers that satisfies Pythagorean's theorem? Um, so uh, here we go. We're going to use a squared 
plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, we can do 12 squared plus 35 squared. And we want to know, does that equal 37 squared? If it does, if these two sides equal each other, then this is a right angle, and then this is tangent. Okay? So 12 squared is 144. 35 squared is 1,225. 37 squared is 1,369. And if I add 144 and 1225 together, we get 1,369 equals 1,369. So this is a right triangle, uh, therefore uh, is ST tangent to circle P? The answer to this question is yes. The second example problem I have illustrating the tangent line to a circle theorem is this. Uh, in the diagram, it says point B is a point of tangency. Find the radius of circle C. All right, so since we are told point B right here is a point of tangency, that means that where AB and BC uh, intersect or meet, that's going to be a 90 degree angle. So we have another right triangle situation going on, which means we can use Pythagorean's theorem to solve this problem. So Pythagorean's theorem, again, we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, the a squared, I'm just gonna call that 80. So we got 80 squared the B is going to be R, so I've got R squared equals, and the C, this is kind of the tricky part here, the C is the hypotenuse, which is this line right here. It has to be all of the lines, so it has to be this part 50 plus this part R, so I'm going to say that this length from A to C is the quantity 50 plus R. And then it has to be squared, of course, because we're doing C squared. So 80 squared, 6,400 plus R squared is just R squared. 50 plus R quantity squared. Let's write out how that needs to be worked. 50 plus R quantity squared is 50 plus R times 50 plus R. And if you remember your, your FOIL steps, we're going to have to multiply 50 times 50, 50 times R, R times 50, and R times R. So let's do that. We've got now 6400 plus R squared equals 50 times 50 is 2500. And then I've got on the outside 50R, on the inside we have 50R and then r times r is r squared. All right, I'm gonna to begin to start uh, solving this. Uh, I can uh, collect the like terms right here. Uh, at the same time, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract r squared from both sides as I'm trying to combine my like terms. Uh, now when I do that, the r squares just happen to conveniently cancel on both sides. So we now have 6,400 equals 2,500 plus 100R. I am going to subtract 2,500 from both sides. So I'm left with 3,900 equals 100R. And if I then divide both sides by 100, we get R equals 
39. And there's our radius. Finally, our second theorem of this first lesson is called External Tangent Congruence Theorem. It states that tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. So here I've got two tangent lines. They originate from a common external point. Uh, this theorem says that these two tangent lines are going to be congruent. The length of one will be the same as the length of the other. Let's end this lesson with a final example to illustrate that external tangent congruence theorem. Uh, the problem says find the value of x. Uh, here we stated that rs is tangent to circle C at point S and RT is tangent to circle C at point T. Uh, since both of these two lines are tangent lines that originate from the same point R, uh, that previous theorem tells us that these two tangent lines are in fact congruent. Since they are congruent, we can set them equal to each other. So we can do 3x plus 4 equals 28. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. So we get 3x equals 24. We'll divide both sides by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8. And there you have it. That'll do it for this first lesson on circles. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in, in the comment section below. Uh, you can help out the channel by giving this video a like and subscribe to this channel, and I would appreciate that. Thank you very much for watching.